Hello everyone, this is uh, Steven Tucker. I want to uh, put this video together um, to really show how we parallel cutting units at Four Seasons um, and how I've done it uh, at the last few golf courses that I've been at. I had some requests from guys uh, that partially understood what I was doing but uh, really wanted to get a, a closer look, you know, using, utilizing this video. Um, I want to also thank Alberto who is doing this for me as far as the process here uh, and demonstrating it. As you can tell here, he's uh, he's checking the cut first. So uh, I'm assuming, uh, you know, for people that are watching this, when you get to this point, you've already ground your reel, ground your bed knife, put them all together, and uh, are really trying to make sure your cut's good, your height's good, and those type of things. Um, so as you can see, he's taking a 1,000th feeler gauge, and uh, he's checking the gap between the reel and the bed knife. Uh, one of the requirements for John Deere uh, when they say uh, to set up the cutting unit, so that's one process we're doing. And then here he's setting his height of cut, so we want to make sure that the height of cut is equal so that when we roll it back and check the parallel uh, that it makes sense. So 471, and then we're going to check the other side. Uh, we're actually using an IGCMA rock uh, gauge with a digital dial indicator on it uh, just for accuracy purposes I think uh, in all this this um, this height of cut gauge gives us the the most accuracy because it cannot be bent back and forth 471 on this side uh, you cannot uh, you can't change that height of cut gauge by putting more pressure on it or not and you can you know it doesn't matter who's using it we kinda get the same results uh, So going on with the process the next step is uh, the the uh, rock test so we're going to rock it back and forth and see if we've got any movement um, and we do see a little bit there so we need to find out how much that is typically what we see is about ten thousandths uh, you will not see much rock and uh, you know so it's got to be I'm assuming more than ten thousandths of a uh, as, as far as being out of square we're, we're at least more than ten thousandths so what he's doing here is he's locking down the rear roller the idea behind that is that when you lock the rear roller down to this surface plate, uh, we're pushing how far the cutting unit's out of parallel to the front roller because we want the maximum amount uh, as far as parallel goes out in the front. Um, he's taking his washer and he's sticking it underneath the front roller and basically that's to take uh, some of the weight off of the adjustment when he goes to make it um, and then that way he can also measure uh, the difference as far as how far out of parallel it is. Okay, so here he's taking a stare at dial indicator and we're going to zero out the right side and it really doesn't matter if it's the right or left side uh, depending on the type of cutting unit that you do this on you want to do it from the side the eccentric bolt is located. Um, so if you notice here he's doing it from the right side and the idea here is that he wants to he wants to zero out here to have a reference point. Okay. So now we're going to go back over and we're going to check the other side and this side is going to tell us how far out of square the cutting unit is. Uh, looks like we're going to be right around the 20 thousandths range. Um, now the, the idea behind this is that now we can tell exactly how far out of square we are. You know with other with other methods, all you can do is get close. And like I said, you, you don't see a rock at ten thousandths, um, but you can surely still uh, play some effect as far as how the cutting unit itself is balanced. And what I mean by that is weight distribution. Um, when a cutting unit's out of square, the weight is distributed onto the outside corners of the rollers. And uh, that's where you get that, you know, uh, well, a lot of reasons on why you get that overlap mark. Uh, so now on the John Deere QA5 he has to take off the uh, the link bar uh, because when we make the adjustment we only want to make it on one side we don't want to affect the other side as well. Okay so the most complicated part about this is understanding the math. The cutting unit is 20 thousandths out of square so what he needs to do is he needs to change it by five so we need to go from the 80 thousandths that you noticed on the dial indicator before to 85 thousandths and he did that all right he, so he's changed five thousandths on the back roller all right and then he's going to do the same thing on the front roller all right because 
what happens is when you change the back roller by five thousandths, it really affects it by ten because whatever you do to one side equally affects the other side. So while he only moved it five thousandths, it really moved it ten thousandths. And you'll be able to see that here in a minute. Alright, so he's changing the eccentric bolt. Now he needs to go another five thousandths, so he should be at ninety, uh, ninety thousandths on this adjustment. And you'll notice with this one that uh, the dial indicator keeps moving back and forth. Um, on the QA5, the eccentric bolt is very, very um, touchy. So you don't have a lot of throw on it, or a gradual throw, let's say. Uh, so the least little bit that you move that, it really affects how far it moves. And so uh, he needs to stop that right on 90. So when he's trying to tighten the bolt down, the eccentric bolt's moving. And so you can see here that he, he's kind of struggling with it to, to get it right on 90. Um, either way, we'll get there. All right, so we'll, we're locked down at 90 thousandths. Uh, and now what, I'll, what, what he's going to do is he's going to go back and he's going to zero out uh, his reference point again and then see uh, how much that af affected the, the cutting unit. Uh, if he did everything properly here, he should be at zero on both sides and it should be perfectly, it should be perfectly parallel, at least at this stage. Okay, so he's adjusted to zero at the high point on the roller and then he's going to check the other side and it is dead zero okay so as far as we know right now the cutting unit should be square alright so the next stage we are going to unlock the back roller and take the front washer out from underneath the cutting unit okay so there's the front washer and now unlocking the back roller Alright, so now we're going to roll it back out onto the, flat, the platform that we built. Or first we're going we're gonna to do the rock test again and make sure that we don't see any daylight underneath that rear roller, which we don't. So, so far so good. Now we're going to roll it out onto the platform. And, uh, you know, the biggest point of this is because it's as it would be in situation. So, uh, we're trying to duplicate what it would be like out on the grass and uh, so that means all the adjustments have fallen um, and we are seeing exactly what you would see out there all right so if you remember before we were at 471 on high to cut and if we did everything properly we should be at 471 on both sides uh, on this adjustment as well all right so 471 and a half I don't think anyone would argue with that and on the other side 471 exactly okay so basically what that tells you now is that we've taking taken the 20 thousandths we've pivoted the rollers around the bed knife and now the rear roller the bed knife and the front roller are all parallel with each other at the 471 so um, I hope this answers uh, you guys questions and gives you a little bit more insight on how we parallel cutting units um, Ultimately, I think this is the absolute best way to do it. Uh, I want to thank a couple of manufacturers as well that have uh, seen this process and have um, made some improvements on their machines uh, due to it. Um, I know that Toro uh, came out with an eccentric bolt for the DPAs, uh, which we were a big part of making happen uh, because of this process. And, uh, you know, John Deere, uh, on their walking greens mower, we made some, some or helped them with uh, discovering some, some things with that. So uh, I want to thank everyone for watching. And uh, if you get something out of the video, please let us know. And if you'd like to see more or if something's not clear, uh, please, uh, please leave us a message on our YouTube channel as well. So thanks again and uh, hope this helps you.